Stable coins. Stable coins are cryptocurrencies that are backed by tangible physical items, fiat currencies, or other cryptocurrencies or algorithms. In this video, I'll give you examples of the different kinds of stable coins, while at the same time giving you the historical context of why they are needed and why they might be the next big thing in the years to come. And if you watch all the way till the end, you'll learn which stable coins to avoid if you don't want to get hammered with hyperinflation. So lovingly, tenderly, gently, caress that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's get started. You're watching Finance Squared, and I'm your host, Derek West. And on this channel, we love talking about personal finance, entrepreneurship, and even wacky topics like cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrencies that are backed by something other than ones and zeros are the topic of today's video. They're called stable coins, and they might just be the next big thing to hit the crypto sphere. Cryptocurrencies are unlike other currencies in that since they are not backed by sovereign governments, mostly, they're free to experiment with their algorithms in an attempt to find a niche for them that works. Because of this, no two cryptocurrencies are completely alike. Well, not the popular ones anyway. Some are just clones of each other, yes. But most cryptocurrencies are designed to behave in different ways and put emphasis on different things. One can think of the evolution of cryptocurrencies as happening in waves. The first wave of coins was just about transferring value in a decentralized manner and digitally. The second wave had a lot to do with smart contracts, money that behaved automatically according to pre-programmed mechanisms inherent with a token. The third wave introduced governance for all these mechanisms and ways to help to fix some of the problems that have occurred with the first wave and the second wave, namely scalability, interoperability, and governance and compliance. The first wave of cryptos included currencies like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. Each of those coins really was an improvement on the original Bitcoin, but each put the focus somewhere else. Litecoin and Dogecoin tried to improve the efficiency and speed of transactions, like most cryptocurrencies that followed after Bitcoin. Bitcoin used to be really, really, really slow at performing transactions. But Dogecoin added a little bit of pizzazz to what, at the time, was a sort of boring topic. Following that first wave came the second wave. You know, as typical when counting things. Groundbreaking stuff. But this wave focused on smart contracts and enabling smart contracts. Coins like Ethereum and Ethereum's token Ether and Chainlinks and its token Link and other currencies. And that led to the third wave of cryptocurrencies. And this wave was all about improving upon the concepts of smart contracts and making cryptocurrencies that were highly scalable, interoperable, and sustainable, including sustainable with governance, sustainable in the way that they're mined, sustainable in other ways as well. Cryptocurrencies like Cardano, Polkadot, and others are examples of such coins. Something is still missing, however. Somewhere along the way, someone must have thought to themselves, well, the idea of a decentralized cryptocurrency is a good idea. All these coins have the same inherent flaws that the dollar, the euro, and the yen have, in that they are not backed by anything and could technically inflate or deflate the same way that those currencies do. Each of those coins has really nothing backing it. They're all effectively ones and zeros sitting in cold storage somewhere, not even gathering dust. Someone somewhere says that they're valuable and therefore they are. Exactly kind of like the US dollar. The only differentiator being that most of these cryptocurrencies have a limited number of issuance to them. So they tend to rise over time. And in a way, the people who say that those coins are valuable are right. If people think something is valuable, then it is valuable. Gold is only valuable because people think that it's valuable. At the same time though, gold is tangible and it's something that people do really want. It would be nice to have a coin that you could redeem for an actual, tangible, physical item. Could there be a way to combine the benefits of a decentralized form of value transfer and the modern portability it provides along with some of the ancient principles of what sound money is all about? That is to say, it's based off of something that everyone agrees is valuable. Some enterprising individuals think so and thus stable coins arose into the crypto sphere and to a certain degree, have taken the world by storm, sort of. What is a stable coin? A stable coin is, just like its name implies, a class of cryptocurrencies that tries to offer price stability, and they're backed by a reserve asset of sorts, or an algorithm, which I'll get into. The assets that they are backed by tend to be something that usually has a stable price in and of itself, things like the US dollar, or gold, or silver. Stable coins arose to help to alleviate some of the price swings of other cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin, which can have radical price swings, as we have seen in recent history. These price swings have been known to be at or greater than 10% intraday for some cryptocurrencies, which can give your average investor a ton of indigestion and really tempt them to get out while the getting is good. I understand that your typical crypto geek is going to ride or die with his coin of choice, but there are people out there who do get squeamish when 10% of their investment vanishes in eight hours. But more than that, wild price swings contribute to crypto coins like Bitcoin being unreliable to be used by the general public for simple transactions daily. It is similar to a situation of hyperinflation. If the currency that you're using to do your day-to-day -day trading with is consistently decreasing in value, as is the case with currencies that hyperinflate, then you're just not going to be able to plan for what you need to bring to your side of a financial transaction. If the price is always going up, there is a chance that the party you're doing business with may not have enough funds to let the transactions go through. And if it's wildly gyrating from one day to the next, then it's probably best to just let it sit in cold storage, gathering digital dust until the actual 
you know, metaphorical dust settles. Now, fiat currencies like the US dollar, while they are not backed by gold anymore, managed to maintain their stability, mostly at this point, that might change in the near future, by using mechanisms like raising or lowering interest rates on key measures to help keep the supply of money at a mostly constant rate of inflation, currently targeted at or around 2%. Most cryptocurrencies lack this feature, and they sort of float freely in the ether, and their price is not influenced anyway by a central authority, which is part of their charm actually. But at the same time, it can hamper them from being useful to actually do business with. But that leads us to the types of stable coins that are out there. There are a couple of major types of stable coins out there for you to consider. Fiat backed stable coins, crypto collateralized stable coins, and algorithmic stable coins. Each of them manages price stability in a different and unique way. For example, fiat backed stable coins. Fiat backed stable coins use currency reserves of popular notes from around the globe, notably the US dollar, as a form of collateral. Tether and true US dollar are popular crypto coins that are pegged, if you will, to the US dollar and their value is backed by dollar deposit. Commodity-backed stable coins are backed by assets such as gold and silver, or even oil. An example of a commodity-backed stable coin would be Digix. Digix is backed by gold and based off of the Ethereum blockchain, where one Digix represents one gram of gold. Then there's the Perth Mint Gold Token, whose currency is backed by gold from the Western Australian region of Perth, as would aptly be expected. The purity and weight of the gold is guaranteed by the government, with the Mint issuing digital gold certificates through the Gold Pass app. Those certificates are then used to back PMGT tokens. Each token is backed by those certificates on a one-to-one -one ratio. Then there is Pax Gold, launched by Paxos, a New York State trust company. Pax G tokens are backed by one fine troy ounce of a 400 ounce London good delivery gold bar stored in Brinks vaults. I'm not sure how they plan to redeem that to you if you requested to have your crypto redeemed. Are they gonna flake off that one ounce that's needed? That probably needs to be researched a little bit more. But then we have Tether Gold. Tether, the largest US dollar backed stablecoin issuer, also issues a gold backed cryptocurrency. Each token is backed by one troy fine ounce of gold on a London good delivery gold bar. Their gold reserves are held in a Swiss vault and token holders can look up the serial number of their assigned gold bars via Tether's website. You can take physical delivery of the token or redeem it for cash should you choose to. The other type of stablecoin is a crypto collateralized stablecoin. These are cryptocurrencies that are backed by other cryptocurrencies, a crypto to crypto time space continuum, if you will. Since cryptocurrencies tend to be volatile, like we described earlier, crypto collateralized stablecoins are over collateralized or they maintain a much larger reserve and issue a lower number of stable coins. Maker DAO's DAI is an example of a cryptocurrency that is collateralized by a basket of cryptocurrencies and is also pegged against the US dollar. And then we have algorithmic stablecoins. Algorithmic stablecoins aren't backed by anything, similar to the US dollar or the euro. And also similar to the US dollar and the euro and the yen, they have mechanisms within them to pull back their currency if it starts to inflate and increase the amount of currency in circulation if the demand is there. Examples of algorithmic stablecoins include the DeFi dollar, which is backed by an index of stable coins. Ampleforth is a US dollar soft pegged digital currency that adjusts supply daily based on market conditions. And then there is Frax, the world's first fractional algorithmic stable coin. But with all that information, you're probably wondering which type of stable coins are the best and which should you avoid? Well, the truth is on a topic like this, there really is no best per se. It's all about the coins that make the most sense to you, the investor in the asset. Stable coins are like any other investment vehicle. If you don't understand what you're investing in, simply don't invest in it. Move on to a different investment that you do understand. But if you do understand it, don't be afraid to take the plunge in an asset that makes the most sense to you. <laughs> that said, however, I would avoid the dollar-backed stable coins at all costs at this point in time. Why do I say that? Cryptocurrencies come with a couple of main advantages. They're portable and they can be used anywhere in the world at the same price with no conversion middlemen. They're also more private than standard money, except for cash, and you don't need to store them in a bank of any kind. If you have a digital wallet, you are the bank for your cryptocurrency. They are decentralized and nobody controls them. This last one is key. Because people who control currencies, whether state controlled banks or private banks that act as central banks for an economy, the people that control them may have ulterior motives other than maintaining a solid currency for people to trade with each other. And the US dollar is one of the currencies that may be in the worst situation of all fiat currencies in the world, save for the yen or the yuan. It would seem that the policies of easy money over the last couple of years is gonna result in the inflation of the US dollar and a stable coin that is pegged to that inflation will also experience the devaluation. So if you're looking to avoid having the value of your money eaten away at, I would not invest in a dollar backed stable coin. That is just me, however. You, as an informed YouTuber now, had to make your own decision. What I would invest in, however, is a subscription to a high quality finance channel, just like this one. You'd be well advised to do the same. You can do that 
by clicking the subscribe button and turning on post notifications so you don't miss any videos that come out on cryptocurrencies, personal finance, and entrepreneurship when they drop and while you're in an engaging mood. Go on ahead and gently press that like button for the YouTube algorithm if you haven't already. And keep in mind, a goal without a plan is a wish. And a goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on your personal finances by exploring the possibilities of stable coins. And I'll see you next time. Peace.